you know how many people are involved? There are about 30 students involved with the production. Um, how, how big a cast? There are about 10. 10 in the cast? 10 in the cast itself. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Can I kind of expand on what you said about the um, music honors? Because I had a gentleman from the Boosters Club call me today and wanted me to publicly say that the Berkeley Jazz Festival was a group of at least 200 from all of the Northeast. And our school placed fourth in the um, Division Five, uh, which was, was quite excellent. And he also was the chaperone for that group and wanted us to publicly acknowledge the exemplary behavior and the way the CAPE students behaved that entire um, day and, and did us proud and would like to have that recognized. Following that, I want to acknowledge um, two young men from that jazz festival, um, Scott Lamer and, well, he, Scott Lamer was given the Judge's Choice Award for being the drummer on the jazz ensemble, and Ryan Maskowitz was given the Judge's Choice Award for his Dixieland combo. Both of these young men are drummers and did not have the solos necessarily, but were singled out at the jazz festival for their musical performance. And on this Saturday, oh no, Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, there will be a combined concert of the Concert and Symphonic Band with Scarborough High School at Scarborough High School Auditorium. And the Bonnie Eagle State Jazz Festival is open to the public. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And our middle school representatives? Do we have any middle school? Um, our science fair open house is going to be March 26, and um, that's for 7th and 8th graders. And we're having a lot going on with the high school placement, and we just got our course recommendation sheets yesterday. And um, the parents' meeting was canceled last Thursday, and it's going to be in the middle school cafeteria um, this Thursday for the incoming kids or the new freshmen. And our course selection sheets are due by March 21st. And um, we had a fun trip to Happy Wheels. They were um, really impressed and pleased with our behavior. And um, we might be doing a magazine drive. And if we do, the seventh and eighth graders are planning on taking the money that we raise individually to the high school with us to have money for our student council there. And the fifth and sixth graders will try to um, lower the cost with Chiwanki if we do that. And we are getting our report cards Friday. And indoor track started, and we've done very well with the first two meets, and that's about it. Any questions? Any comments? Questions? Thank you, Kate. Yes. Um, next is communications. The only thing I have is I do have a communication from Kevin Sweeney on the inhalant policy, and he's going to speak to that later on, and I'll distribute this to the board at that time. It's a copy of the bill that's going to be heard in the legislature. <coughs> Well, I have a okay. communication again. Um, this is from the Portland Museum of Art. This is Young Art Month from the Maine Arts Education Association, and we have three pieces on display, one from each of our schools that are being featured, or people who have been um, selected by their art department. And it will be on display for the month of March only. Do we know the names of the three students? I don't have the names of all three. Principals know the names of the three students. Any other communications? Joe. Uh, just a, a quick note um, that March is also Music in Our Schools Month. Um, along with the Berkeley Festival, there's uh, a number of high school and middle school musicians who will be attending a, a solo an ensemble competition and festival at uh, University of Southern Maine at Gorham. Uh, I believe that's it's the upcoming Saturday. I can't remember exactly what date it is, but uh, we wish those students good luck at their at their uh, solo festival. Ann? Can I just ask for a clarification? We had um, all received a copy of the letter from the sixth grade parent who was concerned about Chiwanki 
and I had asked that that be put on the agenda. <clears throat> Since that wasn't put on the agenda, can we just clarify where that stands? Because I don't know if anybody's right. contacted her. Well, we've had some conversation. We're going to have an informational meeting for parents of children who are going to Chewankee to explain some of the issues, and we'll have representatives representing various points of view. Uh, it hasn't been scheduled yet, but it'll be in the next couple of weeks. So all parents who have students going to Chewankee will be notified. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we move on to superintendent's report and an update on the 97-98 budget process. That is the only topic we seem to have these days, and that's the budget. And Scott Poole, the business manager, will address two aspects of that. One is the issue of subsidy, because there have been a number of articles in the newspaper, and I'd like to make sure that the public understands what some of the issues are and what some of the numbers are relative to subsidy, and then Scott will also update us as to where we're at in our own internal budget process. Um, what Cynthia said there's a lot of numbers floating around the paper. I think first, before we can, um, the audience is more can understand uh, what those numbers mean. First, you have to really have a basic understanding of the school subsidy program. So what I have is a print out of a state formula, maybe I give you a brief explanation of why paper would receive this little subsidy for the best. I'd like to just take out to you for that. This is empty. You want to read those two numbers that they may not be yeah, able to see them. Yeah, the figures here are 370, uh, basically 372,000 per pupil, and the state average is 304 per pupil. Now, the other piece of the subsidy formula is that 15% of the formula is based on your income <coughs> in your community. So, if you take it, which is right here, the local median income, the median income in Cape Elizabeth is 55,000. So compared to the state average for 31,000, we're much higher than the state average um, you know, income level. All those items factored together create a basically a factor that the state uses to determine what is your local assessment or your local foundation allocation. So as you can see in the formula, Cable Elizabeth really loses in two areas, property values and income. So they are two high levels that affect the level of subsidy for your community. That 70%, uh, that 0 0.70 factor, that's worked into the direct education cost in the subsidy formula. And what you, what, what the state does is they take the number of pupils in the community, okay, K through eight and nine through twelve, multiply that by per pupil guarantee, okay, which is what you're guaranteed per student, um, bringing you to basically a total figure here. Um, based on the, these uh, per pupil. Here's that factor again, that 70%, that 71% that I was talking about. And that's what the state says. You have to raise at your local share of property taxes to support education to receive your 29% of the state subsidy. So, okay. so basically, if anybody ever asks you, Cable Elizabeth is a 29% receiver of state subsidy. I mean, that's, uh, that's a pretty important factor to remember because a lot of communities are 40, 60, and 80 percent subsidy levels. <laughs> um, the, uh, so that's really how we work out. 
out to this figure up here, which says that's what your community will get in state subsidy for direct educational costs. There's other factors down here which are indirect costs of education, and those are all figured basically at 41% local share level. Um, all that factor brings us to what we budgeted in our current budget for our total subsidy. So again, you only get 29% of what the state is allocated is what it costs you for your school department. So we only have a 29% subsidy level. So that's kind of a, a real quick analysis of the subsidy formula, okay, and how it works and how Cape Elizabeth really doesn't fare well with income and property values. So what that means is going on in the legislature right now is that there's several proposals floating out there. The first one the first one is this is what we received last year in state subsidy. Okay? And when you compare that to the recommended 1% level, which is the subsidy printout that we received this year. I shared that with everybody on the board earlier. Um, the difference between those two figures is the 200000 which currently is reflected in our current budget. So, so in effect, if funding is, is leveled at the 1% level that's currently estimated, okay, Cape Elizabeth will lose 200000 in subsidy over what they had last year. There's a couple of strategies that are at the legislative level now, which um, uh, Jean Gambardin and Jane Emmerich or Senator Amaral are currently working on. Strategy A is increasing the GPA to a 2% funding level. What that means to Kate Elizabeth is that we would, we would basically only lose 162,000 under that proposal. If they increase the funding by you know 2% for fund, from uh, 1%, which means we would receive an extra 38,000 in revenue under our current uh, school budget to offset you know, our um, spending increase our property. Under the second strategy, we're assuming a 2% increase again, or a 2% increase in state aid at the funding level. But also with that, like we received back in this year, there was a hardship cushion. This, past, this, this current year, we have a hardship cushion of 273000 We would have lost an additional 273000 from this figure had we not had that hardship cushion built into the um, subsidy formula. Currently, they're working on that again. It isn't as much this time around, but they're currently working on some kind of a hardship cushion for those communities who are losing you know, a large amount of subsidy. Under this, under this proposal, the second proposal, Cape Elizabeth fares slightly better than that. They'll only use 109000 in subsidy, and it'll provide us with an additional $91,000 uh, to our current budget, no pay to offset property tax. So what does that mean to where we're at in the budget right now? There's three scenarios of what that means to us with after our uh, last budget meeting. This is where we're currently at on the 1% funding level. We're at a total budget of $12,188,000. Again, here's the 200 loss in state subsidy, which we're experiencing. That means that we're currently at a 0.71 or 7, a 71 cent increase to the mill rate, reflecting the $106 increase to the average property tax. Okay, that's currently where we're at. Under the first option that we saw, uh, this is the option if uh, general purpose aid is increased by two, uh, the increase to the 2% funding level. Again, we would only lose 162000 We would be at a $0.65 cent increase to the mill rate, resulting in $97, basically $98 to the average property tax on a $150,000 house in Cape That's scenario number two. The best case of all scenarios that are out there right now before the legislature would be if we only lost $109,000 in state subsidy, this is the 2% funding level along with the hardship cushion. It would mean that Cape Elizabeth would have a 57 cent increase to its bill rate and 86 dollars to the average property tax. And that's after our last budget meeting where we'll be at. So, uh, as you can 
see property values, the income levels. That's the reason why most of Southern Maine is suffering with the current value I hope that provides a little bit more information, a little bit more clarity on where these figures are on the paper than where you saw the 162,000 and the 109,000 compared to the 200,000 of the term we're talking about. I'd entertain any questions if anybody has any. According to the paper today, if they're reviewing the income tax cap, they're three months ahead of schedule, which is good for the legislature. If they're if they're talking about that part of, of finding resources or not finding resources, uh, just to remind the public that we have another budget meeting on March 27th, which is a Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. I believe in this yes. chamber. Uh, we next move on to principal's reports, and we start with Pond Cove. Good evening, everybody. Is this now off, or is it on? Uh, just a few items tonight. Uh, I wanted to uh, repeat what I repeated in the Thursday notices about the Odyssey of the Mind celebration and competition last week. Pond Cove had 10 teams, 5 K-2 through two and 5 3-4. through four. And besides the celebration of the evening, there was an actual OM competition, and one of the teams is going to move on to the regional finals in Portland this weekend. Um, once again, thanks to Martha Palmer, who was a driving force behind it, and to all the parents and community members who coached and gave up their time to do it. Uh, I hope it becomes an annual event, and some of the parents are moving on to middle school. Maybe they'll, they'll take it up, too. Uh, for the past few meetings, I've been reporting about the Science Committee. Um, the volunteers that you've heard about uh, are continuing to meet early in the morning on a regular basis. Uh, besides following up on the two in-service days that we had about uh, a month ago, where uh, Kerry Curtis particularly is uh, being very aggressive about writing a way to get sample curriculum from uh, commercial producers of curriculum. And um, we sh we're, the samples have arrived. We'll be checking back with the people who have done the training and checking back with staff members so we have some idea where we want to go with this. Uh, Doug Worthley, the high school teacher, uh, wrote uh, an excellent letter to go with our um, request for curriculum to the commercial producers, telling them where we are, what uh, we're committed to with the framework, and asking them to match their product to our needs. So I really want to thank Doug. It's a great, great letter. And so far, two people have responded to it and claim to be matching, in some respects, what you've seen in the framework. Doug also asked them uh, what other schools in Maine were using it. So I think he's done a great job. The um, assessment work project we've been working on has been going along uh, slowly, but I think productively. I, th I think I sent you in our last uh, faculty meeting minutes the report, we, we took a look at the uses and possible abuses of standardized testing at Pond Cove and elsewhere. Along the way, we looked at the, uh, the MEA and the National Assessment for Educational Progress, which we do with a sample of fourth graders. That's the NAEP that President Clinton has been talking about. We looked at the California Achievement Scores, and we looked at the, a sample of the degrees of reading power, which is a, uh, an alternative test that surfaced in discussions at the Reading Policy Committee that we might want to consider. Um, most of Thursday's meeting will be devoted to that topic again, so we should have recommendations uh, to you by the end of the year. I should also mention, too, that we'll be doing the California Achievement Test earlier this year. We're going to start them on April 4th. That's before vacation. They'll all be mailed off. The makeups will be done the following week, mailed off, and we'll actually have the results back for a change. 
Um, Thursday night or Thursday afternoon and evening is the main ambassadors for education workshop to uh, train facilitators are coming to work with uh, community members and parents to it's kind of a school 101 help people outside the schools understand how schools work and see how they can join with us to help improve schools and any of you who would like to come are certainly welcome to come if not for the whole meeting then maybe for the forum part when the people who actually supposed to know something about schools get to field questions from the participants. And one final thing, we've, um, as you know, Rachel Clark has been out on maternity leave. We hired a uh, fourth grade long-term sub, uh, Rebecca Williams, or Becky, has been on the job for over a month now, and uh, through her own efforts and talent and the support of her colleagues and the parents, I think she's done a great job. Just wanted to put in that plug. Any questions for Pond Cove? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, middle school? Good evening. The light. I <laughs> <laughs> didn't realize I was quite that enchanting. But it, that's going to look good on a resume someday or something. Um, what a power. First of all, a couple of things to update you on. Um, after our January 28th workshop, um, George had agreed to gather some parents together and to work together about the issue of the climate in the middle school. We did have that meeting shortly after the February board meeting on February 13th, and it was well attended. Um, it was another lively discussion. Since then, George and I have had several conversations about what will the next step be. I know George has also had several um, energetic phone conversations with other interested parents. I have also been working with Ann Swift Kayata, who's the president of our Middle School Parents Association, on the same issue, and Ann has been working with other parents. Um, tomorrow morning, George and I are going to meet yet once again to talk about some things. Um, Ann Swift Kayata and Rachel Stamieskin, two middle school parents, have put down on paper some thoughts for us to look at, and we'll be looking at those um, tomorrow. Phil Jewett and I have a meeting with Ann and Rachel at 8 o'clock. And what we really do foresee in the next several weeks, the next meeting coming to respond to a, a hard copy of a proposal of what our next step might be. And George will continue to work with us on that. Coming out of the February 13th meeting, I think, was really a concern by many parents that instead of looking at it just system-wide, that one of our first steps needed to be to look at it individually building to building and um, of course some of the issues are occurring at the middle school so that's where we are with that particular one. I would hope at some time that the different building groups could then also get back together as we mesh it and weave it together to a system-wide approach to climate and to discipline, um, ethics codes, whatever we come up with um, to address those particular issues. So we are moving along with that. As Caitlin um, explained, um, the students will be bringing home their report cards on Friday. Attached to those report cards for the eighth graders will be the guidelines for eligibility for participation in co-curricular activities and athletics at the high school. This is important for entering freshmen to know for um, September of 1997 because they do need to pass all of their courses the third trimester, the middle school, and the third trimester started on Monday. So we want to once again just remind students and their families about this. We will also be publishing a copy of that guideline in our newsletter. The deadline for the newsletter is this Friday. It should go out sometime within the next 10 days from Friday. So hopefully people will get a double um, copy of exactly what that guideline is and be well aware of that. It has been mentioned, uh, most of our eighth graders could tell you what that guideline is. Um, they could also explain to you why they don't agree with it, but they do know what the guideline is. Um, it has been talked about in many places, advisor, advisee, other classrooms. Um, this, won't, this should not come as a surprise to anyone. It has been discussed here at public board meetings as well. Also, um, as was mentioned, we do have the eighth grade um, parents meeting with the high school, which will be held this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the middle school Pond Cove Cafetorium. And then course selection sheets are due back to the middle school on March 21st. Those went home with students yesterday and parents will get more information from the high school on Thursday's meeting. It was a meeting, as some of you know, that was originally scheduled for last Thursday, but was canceled due to the snowstorm. Now, if you're out there looking for something fun to do on March 19th, 
We would like to invite you to the Middle School Talent Show. We have two performances, one at 3.30 and one at 7 p.m. There is an admissions fee, I think, of $2, but it will be well worth your money uh, kind of thing, and I think it will be enjoyable. Uh, one change that I anticipate this year from um, other year talent shows, I think this year we will probably go with a faculty member being the MC of the show instead of a student MC. Um, but I think that we will move it along and have a grand time. Now, speaking of all of those other fun things, um, as Caitlin said, we have our own internal science open house for 7th and 8th graders on March 26th. Also, on April 4th, we are hosting the Triple C Science Exposition, and we'll be hosting the other Triple C schools and some of our own students. And if somebody's out on that Friday night looking for something fun to do, you can drop by the middle school and see lots of young scientists eager to explain what they have learned together. On April 9th and 10th, we will be doing our play, and it is a Broadway review of George M. Cohen's songs, and um, that will be lively. There will be an evening performance on the 9th. I hope I have this right, but I think I do. It's the evening performance on the 9th, an afternoon performance on the 10th, and an evening performance on the 10th. The evening performance on the 9th will be sort of a fancy dress rehearsal, but um, we look forward to doing that. And Steve Price and all of the students have been working very hard on that particular activity. On March 1st, we hosted the Middle School Music Festival, which was um, a new group of schools. We've done that with our Triple C partners before this year. Uh, we broke away and did something a little bit different and worked with Scarborough, the two middle schools in South Portland, the middle school in Westbrook, the middle school in Gorham, and in Lake Region. And it was wonderful. That happened to be a day I know none of you could attend because we're all at an all-day budget meeting. But for me, it was wonderful. I got to take a break for an hour, go down and introduce the music and listen to it, and it was wonderful. I'm Sorry, the rest of you couldn't have that same advantage because it was a nice break in the action from budget discussions. As um, was already alluded to, we do have our students are planning, we're planning to take our students to Chewankee this year, the week of May 12th for the Doan Ramsbotham team, and the week of May 19th for the Sloan, Price, Casey team, and then the Benoit Record team. This year we have, um, has come to the uh, superintendent's attention that there are some parents who are concerned about safety at Chewankee, and this is not so much safety of the Chewankee programs, but safety of Chewankee due to its location near Maine Yankee. And so we are trying to, we are getting a hold of Chewankee, I think tomorrow, I talked with Joe Doan today, and he's our, one of our Chewankee team leaders, and he is going to, we're going to arrange for Chewankee to come an evening either late next week or the early part of the week after that uh, for all parents to come. People from Chewankee will be there. We're also going to ask them to see if they can arrange to bring someone from Maine Yankee so they can answer questions about those safety issues. And um, then we will proceed from there. But that will be a, a night for people to do that. And I know the superintendent is also going to arrange from someone um, from the group that is very concerned about the location and about the nuclear power plant to also be at that meeting. So we will certainly do that. And I think that's our middle school report. Thank you very much. Nancy, question? Can, I, can I just ask a question as a parent of an eighth grader? Sure. The course selection sheet I, I found confusing. I think it's just because we probably were going to get the information about it last Thursday, but I'm right. sure I'm not the only parent who's confused. I, so and we'll learn more about You will learn more about that. I, I, would in, I would encourage parents to hold on to those, and even if you want to bring them that night, that's fine, because usually what happens is the high school meeting precedes the students bringing them home, so you have some information, and I think the high school um, faculty will be very willing to answer any questions you have that night. So if people can hold those questions. Then if you have questions still after the meeting, I know our guidance department and the high school guidance department both are very willing to answer further questions about those. If parents have um, questions about the recommendations that were made by teachers for courses they can that's a middle school, that's a middle school issue um, we follow the guidelines the high school gives us the guidelines are pretty specific um, that they give us and we do follow those but as um, mrs. Bisbee and I explained in the class that we teach if a student or their family has any question about a recommendation that we made please feel free to call us directly and we would be glad to talk with you about that um, anybody who disagrees with one you want to start with a middle school um, teacher, we try to follow those high school guidelines well, that we have a meeting with the high school before we fill them out. And there is an appeals process, though, to follow through for any of those recommendations. 
anything. One thing I forgot to, um, Tom reminded of it, me of it when he was mentioning Rachel Clark's um, long-term sub. We were happy this week to welcome back Claire Ramsbotham, who has been on maternity leave for us. Um, Judy Todvin is staying and working with her this week to transition the students back into Mrs. Ramsbotham. We had a very smooth transition when she left, and we wanted to make it a smoother transition as Mrs. Todvin left as well, too. So we're glad to have her back with us. and. I would say that she's glad to be back with us, but as a new mother, she found yesterday very difficult um, to leave her son for the first time. But um, she survived and came back today with a smile on her face, so we're glad to have her back with us again. So that should help your substitute line? That, that should help our <laughs> substitute line a little bit, Charlie, yes. Nancy, uh, just another question, or one more point of clarification, also as an eighth grade parent. Is the intent uh, that this meeting for on Thursday be for parents and incoming students, just parents, right, right? Okay, is, is that? It's, it, it's it, not, it, it, is, it is the high school's meeting, so I'll defer to my colleague, Mr. DeFusco, why he's still here to uh, let him answer that, but it is just for parents, Rick? Yes. Okay, okay, thanks. Our high school. To readdress that, there are always uh, eighth graders who show up for that night, and I think it confuses parents, but we would prefer to have only the parents there. And again, those, those course selection sheets are sent out so that rather than have to distribute them that night, parents have them and have begun uh, looking through them. Uh, Matt Lund stole some of my thunder tonight. I did not have a chance to talk with him before this evening, uh, but I would like to congratulate Mr. Mullen and the students who performed uh, this past weekend at Bonnie Eagle. Uh, they will be com competing at Westbrook in the state championship in the uh, one act plays. Um, also, uh, Matt alluded to the preparation for the spring musical. If you were down at high school, we have a big bulletin board down there with information for students concerning tryouts, schedules. Uh, Once Upon a Mattress is the play that they plan to, or the musical they plan to do. Pit band auditions will be beginning this week, um, and then again tryouts later in March. And um, so that there's, there's a pr plenty of promotion going on at the high school for that. Again, concerning the, uh, the jazz uh, ensemble and Dixieland Combo, the one thing that I would like to mention is I guess a Dixieland Combo was so, uh, so great that they had them dancing in the halls. <laughs> and I would like to acknowledge that Dixieland Combo who competed, Jeff Butterworth on trumpet, Abby Thielen, clarinet, Tyler Record, tenor sax, Jamie Spaulding, trombone, Vince Ferretti, violin, Zach Strout, bass, Sam Lilly, piano, and Ryan Maskowitz on drums. And also that, was, that is the largest, the, uh, the competition at Berkeley is the largest, one of the largest in the country that's held in a one day uh, setting. And again, we, were, we, we came in fourth, which is the best showing that a Cape High School uh, jazz ensemble has ever performed. So Mr. Rich, uh, Richardson was really tickled by that. Um, one thing that Matt didn't mention, um, next week we begin our standardized tests, the MEAs and also the uh, CP3s. The MEAs are for our juniors, then the uh, CP3s for our freshmen and sophomores, and they're Tuesday through Friday. Again, they will be the first two periods of the day. Um, they will be monitored at that point, and seniors come in at, for 9.30 on that day. And they'll, they have an opportunity to come in late. So again, Tuesday through Friday of next week will be the uh, standardized testing times. Um, and also, if some of you saw Sunday's paper, we had uh, an All-American, uh, Parade All-American in soccer, Josh McGeechee, who's a sophomore, one of 33 players ranked nationally out of 25 states. He's the first player from Maine, male player from Maine, ever to be recognized in this, uh, this uh, All-American team. And I know his coach is here and is very proud of that. So, and Josh, what a humble young man he is. Uh, just was, wow, golly gee, you know, was, <laughs> when, when we met with the writer from the paper. Uh, and to Josh, I, I wish him the best and, and congratulations and continued success next year. Thank you. A question? Uh, Rick, excuse me. 20 <laughs> uh, something years ago, I had the opportunity to perform in uh, Once Upon a Mattress. Oh, they may have a part for you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was in the pit band. Oh. And, and, uh, just bringing back memories of that time, there was quite a lot of discussion about some of the language that was in the script and, and that type of thing. Is that being uh, no. I'm glad you brought that up. I know, I, I'll talk with Mr. Mullen about that. I, and uh, maybe in today's standards, it, it, okay. I, can't, I can't remember why or what the situation was exactly, but uh, it might uh, be something to look at. I'll check that out. Thank you <laughs> for the warning. <laughs> Okay, we now move on to committee reports.
And I get to do the first one, which is Finance Subcommittee. Uh, we met at 6.30 this evening in the, in the Town Hall Conference Room, signed the warrants, reviewed the appropriations and those areas that were over. Um, we did a quick review of the status of the budget, which was uh, Scott's presentation this evening. Uh, we had an extensive discussion on a request for an in-house suspension monitor, uh, monitor at the middle school, and the consensus was to proceed forward. It involves um, hiring an EdTech 2 to, to work with uh, in-house suspended students while Nancy is away, uh, working on a Goals 2000 grant. Um, we reviewed the personnel policy for the central office support staff. Um, we did a brief discussion of the business manager's salary comparison. This was a process we started last year and said we would review this year. Um, there was consensus to, to essentially uh, extend a two-year contract to him and um, to make some salary adjustment. Um, and we also received the athletic budget proposal, which we will review um, on our next budget evening. Um, we now move on to policy subcommittee and our chair, Gail. The last policy subcommittee meeting was on February 12th. And we reviewed the guidelines for the eligibility for student participation in co-curricular and athletic programs. We just had a discussion um, that grew out of the confusion over the eligibility pro uh, policy from this semester or the qu second quarter. And Mr. DeFusco agreed to uh, present us with a guideline that would clarify that, and that's included in the packet tonight. It does not need to have a vote. It is just a point of clarification. The second policy that we discussed for a second reading this evening would be the copyright compliance, EGAD. And Ann Chapman had taken the MSMA policy and written it um, for us in a, a clearer more concise way and then have the um, individual copywriting issues, music or libraries um, or the uh, software as guidelines. And I did review that as asked and it seemed to be fine. I have not heard back from anybody here so I'll be presenting that for second reading uh, later on. We did not go uh, present any first readings for this evening. There are no new policies that we will be putting forth. The remainder of our policy subcommittee was a discussion, a continued discussion of the middle school booklet that um, Nancy Hutton and Phil and staff had prepared for the January meeting. Uh, nothing was concluded, it was just a discussion. Our next meeting is this Thursday, March 13th at 7.45 a.m. Any questions? Uh, we now move on to the superintendent search committee and our chair, Ann. Well, we finished another round in our search process. Um, we interviewed se seven semifinalists over the last two weeks. Um, the board will be meeting in executive session tonight to, to choose the finalists who we hope we will be able to schedule for return visits sometime in the next three weeks, span of next three weeks, depending how we can fit them in, right, Cynthia? I know. Sooner the as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would really like to thank everyone who served on that committee, which included the entire board, um, Rick DeFusco, Nancy Hutton, Tom Eisfire, um, Sharon Merrill, Deb Twombly, Mary Gale, and Kevin Sweeney. Um, this was a really big effort um, to read through all these, all these things, sit through all these meetings, and the, the feedback everybody gave was extremely valuable. Um, to the board, and I just want to thank thank you all for that. So we'll up, update again shortly. Any questions? Okay, we move on to unfinished business, and the first is the second reading of policies. Gail? Yeah, I have one policy this evening, EGAD, the copyright compliance. And guidelines. I can do those together, can I? Yes. So I move we accept them. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, vote. All those in favor? Six zero. 
And that's it. Okay. Um, the next unfinished business is a change of date on retirement request. Yes, I wish to recommend that you approve the uh, retirement onto disability retirement of Susan Mackay, effective February 22nd, 1997. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second, George? Any discussion? All those in favor? 6 0. We now move on to new business, and the first is a consideration of a request regarding a proposed lacrosse spring trip. You have the information in your packet, and it does include uh, the names of the chaperones, which is a piece of information you've often uh, asked for, and we recommend that you approve this. I just have one question, and perhaps Rick can answer it. Is there a cost per student? I know they're staying at host families, and it didn't say anything about it. I just want There was, no men to my knowledge, no mention of students having to contribute to that, but I'm sure um, that, that pop, the lacrosse boosters are probably helping out with some of the, the trans, but there's no fee for the students, to my knowledge, to have to attend. Uh, and that's the way it's been. That's why part of it is staying. At the, they probably bring their own money for, for, for food and that sort of thing. Snack type of thing, but uh, okay, okay. So but I can find that out. Meals are not covered because that would be a cost. I mean, no, but I'm saying spending money type things okay. for kids to hit McDonald's okay. or whatever during uh during the time they're there. But the, everything else should should be covered by the the boosters in our in our help. So okay, and if there is a change to that, I'll I'll let. Doc, that's the way I understand it. Andy, anything? Did Keith mention anything to you? I know he's at the uh, coaching clinic tonight. Uh, at the high school, so I do not have that information. And that, uh, that had, had not been an issue in the mm -hmm. past for this particular trip, so, okay. But I think so, it's an issue for these kind of trips. Right here. The cost yeah. per, and how that's to be born. Because right. I, I remember you asked the same about the baseball trip last month, mm -hmm. that it would be not a cost to add it to the student's uh, opportunity. And I, it's not, to my knowledge, not, okay. not part of it. Any other questions? I entertain a motion. Gail? I move we approve the boys' lacrosse trip. Do I have a second? George? Any other questions? All those in favor? 6 0. Okay. Some spring athletic nominations. At the high school, Michael Tyler, assistant track. Jim Littrocake, assistant tennis. And Jennifer Curran, varsity softball. At the middle school, Aneen Burgess, 8th grade softball, Jerry McQueenie, 8th grade baseball, Paul Casey, 7th and 8th grade track. The 7th and 8th grade tennis position, which you have on here, is not going to be occupied at this point in time. So that leaves us to fill 7th and 8th grade tennis, uh, assistant baseball and JV softball at the high school, 7th grade baseball, 7th grade softball, 7th grade lacrosse, and 8th grade lacrosse at the middle school. And I'm sure Andy would appreciate if there are people who are interested in those positions, if they would come forward. Okay, we heard tonight from our um, school representatives that spring practice has started. How are we handling these students? The high school students, like, J like the assistant baseball and, well, JV softball. The JV softball? Doesn't. Okay. So, if someone is who would eventually be on a JV softball team, they must be trying out for the varsity. I mean, what's happening to these students? Trial stopped the 24th, I believe, and then uh, at that point that we do have an assistant, um, the possibility of Tony Godoni, who was an assistant last year, to help out at that time. So anyone who would be trying out for varsity or JV would be trying, would be practicing at this at, point together? At that same time okay. together, yeah. Yeah, we will not remove the opportunities for kids because we'll okay. get someone to help out with that. Okay, thanks. Entertain a motion. Keith. 
I move we accept the superintendent's nominations for the athletic fee positions uh, listed as listed. I have a second? Priscilla? <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? 6-0. Thank you. Consideration of superintendent's nominations for co-curricular fee positions. All right, we have three. Richard <clears throat> Muller to do the spring musical and be the artistic director. Mary Iris to do fifth and sixth grade math team along with Deborah Hanna doing the fifth and sixth grade math team. I have a question. <laughs> who, who is going to be the music director? Because that is a, that is a co-curricular stipend position. And in the past has been our, usually our band or instrumental. I mean, we're starting a, our musical process and we don't have all the players. That was approved last spring with all the others. It just, uh, the artistic one wasn't included, but the musical one was. So he was approved as? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember it, that's why. Okay. I believe it's on the list from last spring. <laughs> I'll double check it. Should I stand? A <laughs> <laughs> Can you just clarify that for us? I know Mr. Richard, uh, Mr. Richardson is, it will not be um, doing the pit band. There was a, Mr. Mullen interviewed a couple of candidates, one, and it was through interest, through Mary Hart as our, as our fine arts chairperson. She forwarded the names to, to Mr. Mullen, and we have not yet, uh, right. there is I a- I remembered it being on Oh, there's a female, I, oh. Okay, it is a co-curricular stipend position, so it will have to come before this board. Okay, right. all right. That's my concern. That, okay. that was the question that I left yesterday, but I understand okay, what was going on. Okay. I'm sorry, I thought I remembered it. And I will get that name to you, and that will be presented at the next meeting. Okay. Can I just, actually, this isn't necessarily a question for Rick. That just brings up to me, who is hiring for these positions? I mean, is, is that a normal procedure to have a teacher in one stipend position doing the hiring of another teacher or somebody, some community member or somebody? In the past, it's never stipend? been a problem because it's always been the high school instrumental instructor. But in this case, he is not, he's opting out. So therefore, I don't believe it should be, I, should, I think it should be in consultation with the music department and not his okay. exclusive, because he's not, he's not in the position to hire okay. or ultimately, fire. Ultimately goes to the building principal. Okay. All right. right, but again, because of issues we were discussing earlier this evening about hiring practices, I think mm. we need to have a very clear chain of who's doing the hiring and making you know the commitments about the job and what other support kind of people are going to be there and where it's coming from we do have a theater assistant how is that person involved in this project yes. okay in the past he's also hired people to come in and work with diction and other things okay if i get those names to dr the, moles the and then the timing is when is the play going well they, they start at the end of march so yes, the next board meeting is not until april 8th i know but we can hold off perhaps until then okay, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Or oh, if we have, we could yeah. do it at oh, the, can we do it at the, the 27th? Great. Okay, that would be one. Right. right. Okay. If you I'll could have, have all those pieces, for I'll me. have that for you. Then. That was why I called this, but I, now I understand why. You okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I entertain a motion. Gail. I move we um, award a, a sign. Approve. 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 <laughs> um, Dick Mullen is the Spring Musical Artistic Director, and Mary Irace and Deborah Hanna for the fifth and sixth grade math team. A second? Second. Keith, any other discussion? I just have a question. Is that, was somebody else in that job before? Isn't, hasn't that been ongoing this year? Or? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Actually, it hasn't. We did host um, a meet in January, and Carolyn Sloan volunteered her time to do that. The fifth and sixth grade program, there really is only one scheduled meet for them. It occurs in May, in May, and what they do prior to that, our usual procedure has been pretty much from February to April vacation to meet once a week. And Carolyn's schedule did not permit her to really take on this position this year, so we advertised in our parents' newsletter, and these two parents came forward uh, with interest to do that, and they um, are meeting with the students once a week. And they, they said they would volunteer to do it if there wasn't any money to do it, so they started. It's sort of like a club kind of thing at this particular point. As it gets closer to the May date, they'll make some selections for the team and for people who can go and who are interested in going. 
Any other questions? All those in favor? 6-0. Consideration of request from a teacher to continue half-time status. Uh, Lisa Martin has been a teacher in the system, and this current year she has been on half-time leave and been teaching half-time, and she has requested that she remain a half-time employee for the 1997-98 school year. And in consultation with Tom, we recommend that she be allowed to do this, but that she become a half-time teacher rather than her current status, which is she's a full-time teacher on half-time leave. And I have discussed that with Lisa as well. So how would you like the motion? That she be allowed to hold a half-time position for the 97 school year. And she was agreeable to that, Cynthia? I discussed that with her, yes. Okay. Keith? Are we going to easily be able to find another half-time to fill that? This, unfortunately for us, is the reading recovery position, which is half time anyway. Just half time so, anyway. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it works well. Yeah. I, I'm actually delighted to see see it taken care of this way because I think this does. It. A few years ago, this was a problem for us. Um, you know, having a people well, on half time status is very basis, difficult. It makes it difficult. Right? Yeah. Okay. Entertain a motion. Okay, how did, how did you want it worded again just to <laughs> approve? be nominated to, to continue for a half-time position for the That's a half-time, okay. Um, so moved. Second, <laughs> George. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Six, zero. A consideration of a draft proposal for a joint resolution proclamation of the school board and town council of Cape Elizabeth in regard to inhalants. And I believe we have someone here to speak Kevin on that. Sweeney speak. Kevin Sweeney. <laughs> And I'm passing around now a copy of the legislation. I think we have nope. Good evening. Thank you. I really hadn't planned on speaking tonight. I just wanted to be available to answer any questions uh, that might come up. And something did come up uh, late last night. I've been working extensively with District Attorney Povich on uh, the language of this bill. And I had submitted to Cynthia this draft proposal with a copy of the original legislation, which has changed significantly as of last night. So I just wanted to make you aware of those changes. The significant change is that the bill is going from a criminal violation to a civil violation. And we are also uh, including the possession of inhalants, not simply the use of inhalants. What this does for the law is make it much more enforceable and takes away the stigma of an arrest record for people under the age of 18. Uh, under a civil violation, we simply, the state simply requires the presumption of guilt rather than proof beyond the reasonable shadow of a doubt. All of the other facets of the legislation remain in place, which significantly is uh, fines, community services, and the referral to a licensed substance abuse counsel for intervention. Uh, that last is the single most important facet of the bill. Other than that, I would only ask that you entertain uh, supporting this. Uh, the CAPE Coalition has been named a national partner of the National Inhaling Coalition. Uh, March 16th marks the beginning of National uh, Inhalant Abuse Prevention Week, and uh, CAPE has rapidly gained the reputation of being on the cutting edge in the state of Maine and leading the charge against inhalants. I'd like to see that continue. The only other piece of news I have is I'm taking the show on the road to Augusta again tomorrow. There will be another legislative workshop. My suspicion is that the bill before you now will be unanimously voted out of committee, which effectively makes it law. Thank you. Any questions of Kevin? I'm, I'm sorry, can I just ask oh. one question? I'm sorry, it's hard to read this and listen to you at the same time. So, it is. Um, so under under this law, it would, you'd be in trouble like for carrying um, nail polish remover in your purse? No, the, uh, the well. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean you, that's kind of how you can read it to mean if it's possession of. The, theoretically, that's, that's not the intent of the spirit of the law. The intent and spirit of the law is that when you find someone in possession of a plastic bag full of spray paint, uh, that that's, and you cannot prove 
that the person has been using it, the presumption will be that possession of a plastic bag full of paint was intended use of inhalants. Okay, or if you saw kids out in a field with the little canisters or Right, in other words, if somebody happens to go back behind the high school and find a group of kids sitting around with a bunch of empty cans of uh, Glade, for example, uh, although no one witnessed them using it, there will be the presumption that that was the intended use of those cans of Glade. Thank you. Keith? I just wanted to comment that it's encouraging to see a citizen initiative so quickly mm. move through the legislature to, to becoming law in, I don't know when you started this, uh, uh, less than a year. This uh, kind of started gelling back in June last year at the, uh, when Jack Nichols made a brief presentation on this at a coalition meeting and then kind of hung around until September with nothing happening at which point uh, I had been doing a lot of research on it and realized that it wasn't just the nitrous oxide, that was just the tip of the iceberg. And as you probably know, the UMO uh, study of, an, of drug abuse, substance abuse in Maine uh, which was just released a few weeks ago is pretty scary. We've got one in five kids who are experimenting with inhalants. And the problem with that is that the first use can kill a kid. But they've also documented, which was not publicized, that the one in 20 main students from grades 6 through 12 are regular inhalant abuse users, uh, which was pretty clear from the recent reports uh, in the national media of what's going on, so uh, I'm convinced that we absolutely have to draw a line in the sand on this, and of course, not to label the kids, but to get them help. So thank you, and by the way, the board and the town council have been extraordinarily supportive. The school administrators have been extraordinarily supportive, and part of that has helped me keep going, doing what I'm doing, so I really do appreciate the help and support. Well, thank you. Thank you. I truly thank, thank you. you. I'm going to read the resolution proclamation. Whereas inhalant abuse can cause sudden sniffing death, permanent brain damage and psychosis, loss of memory, hearing and sight, and significant damage to the heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, and bone marrow, and whereas the agents of inhalant abuse are mired, legal household, school, and industrial products readily available to all persons regardless of age, and whereas Nearly one in five young Mainers in grades six through 12 have abused inhalants at least once, and such abuse is expected to continue and increase. Resolved that the school board and town council of the town of Cape Elizabeth, Maine, supports the passage of legislative document number 305, an act to prohibit the inhalation of toxic vapors for effect during the 118th session of the state legislature, and further, proclaims that the town of Cape Elizabeth, Maine, joins the nation in recognizing the week of March 16, 1997 as National Inhalant and Poisons Awareness Week and, and encourages all residents to become involved in increasing awareness of this silent epidemic. Could I have a motion, please? Ann? I move that we accept the joint resolution proclamation. Does it have an actual title? No, I think that's Regarding it. Regarding inhale yeah. and abuse. Second. Second by Gail. Any discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Uh, consideration of proposal from the Lark Society. Uh, you had information in your packet about a grant that was written by the Lark Society, and I did ask Rick to comment on this since it is a high school I had spoken to um, Sally Martin about this. This was a, a program that, that really Betsy Wiley had initiated a couple of years ago and really uh, worked hard to, to uh, secure and, and last year we experienced the opportunity for the quartet to come in. As Sally uh, mentioned today, that at this point we do not have that initiative or person um, who is taking on the initiative to coordinate that f for next year um, and would like to table that idea um, unless the board uh, and, and give the opportunity to another school and then come back. Oh, I hate to give up this opportunity. Does it have to be a teacher who coordinates it? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it, it, the initiative was, uh, was 
really pursued by well, uh, well it by, says in right. here though that it says we would like to if I could refer to Cape Elizabeth as that school with absolutely no hard commitment they need okay. to have a school endorsement in order to get this grant money um, right I think you could do that we could do that and then work right. out how later. we would okay right I mean I'd be happy to help okay <laughs> you know in any way that I could I think this is this is just a great opportunity, okay. mm. and uh, boy, I hate to see us pass it up. Okay. We yep. have the fiscal uh, agent, Scott. Is that what you're going to tell us? <laughs> what? Right. And they they did say that in the letter that they would seek another. Okay. Does that cost us money? No. <clears throat> well, the answer is maybe a little bit. Yeah. A little bit of time. Small. <laughs> But without having a school involved, they are not eligible for this grant. Well, I'm sure they'll find another school that's more. Oh, they, they what will. they're saying they is they're giving us the first, giving us the first opportunity, opportunity because we were named in the grant. Uh -huh. And having attended the evening performance, it was that part of it was extraordinary. I can imagine the exposure the students have. Okay. The only thing that I would recommend is that we get that out to the community a little okay. more. Yes. It was very lowly attended, but okay. very appreciatively attended by the people that were there. Okay, I'll pass the word on and we'll accept I'll, that. I'll help. Okay, you're on. Okay. <laughs> so do we vote for that? Yes, could I have a motion, please? Oh, I guess I should do this. What, um, what, what are they calling it? Okay. Residency in American Studies. I move that we accept the Portland String Quartet or the Lark Society. Sorry. Um, where was it, George? Did you just see what it's actually called? Okay, just the proposal from the Lark Society. Is that good enough? That's fine. Okay. Yes, that's fine. A second. Any discussion? Nothing has titles anymore. That you <laughs> All those in favor? Six zero. And last, a letter of resignation. I'm sad to report that on yesterday, I received a letter of res resignation from Rick DeFusco, the high school principal. You'll be leaving us on June 30th to assume a position at North Yarmouth Academy. And this is short notice, so we aren't ready to uh, perhaps toast him as much as we might at some point in the future. So, but I do recommend that we accept his resignation with extreme regret. Come, for, come forward. <laughs> the, we haven't we haven't put it as a motion yet. Did you change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, should, I guess I'm jumping the gun here. I just wanted to say after 23 years, um, it, it will be real difficult to say goodbye to colleagues, to students, to parents, to, to both present and past board members. Um, and I'd especially like to thank the board members who were on board four years ago and Dr. Goldman who gave me the fantastic opportunity to be principal of Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, it's an experience and title that I will cherish forever. And it's something that can never be taken away from me. And uh, uh, I just wanted to thank you very much for all of your support over the years and to everyone's support in this community. It's a tremendous community to work for. And there, I just want to thank everyone. Thank you. Can I entertain a motion? Gail. It is with um, real regret that I move we accept Mr. DeFusco's resignation effective June 30th. 1997. 1997. Do I have a second? Second. I want, to, I want to personally thank you on many accounts, but I also want to thank you for taking this opportunity when Beth was away for me to have to face the press. <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> Any other? I, I, I just want to say I think a good portion of the town is in mourning and shock today. Really, Rick. And I'm sure we'll have more to say later. It feels like the air went out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all those in favor? 6 0. A consideration of the superintendent's request to enter executive session for the purpose of selecting semifinalists for the superintendent of schools and to discuss teacher negotiations. Before we do that, yep. I was asked by a citizen to make an announcement that I forgot. Can I do that now? I rescind my uh, <laughs> <laughs>
proposed motion. Right. I was called this afternoon by um, John Ridge, who is part of the Cape Elizabeth Lions Club, to announce that during the last week of March, they are sponsoring a speak out for any interested sophomore or junior, and they need to just call Alex Boardman or John Ridge. There will be a list of topics provided that, they, that any student could speak on, and they are looking for candidates to give scholarship money to for further education. So it's John Ridge or Alex Boardman through Cape Elizabeth Lions, and the speak out is March, the last week of March. Thank you. Okay, consideration for executive session. So moved. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Which motion did you take? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, 6-0.